This is Paul versus Destin, where we talk about industry events, things that are going on. And today's episode is all about Xbox. Why are so many people flocking to Xbox, including Paul Tassi, who's my co-host today? Paul. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are uh, we doing the intro? <laughs> sure, to the death! <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. You know what? We're just going to keep it, keep it that way. That's fine. Paul, I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you this, but you're actually the inspiration for this whole piece. And like you were talking about (laughs) finally making the switch. Well, okay. Going back a little bit further, my coworker, Brian Altano had been playing a lot on Xbox and he's like, Xbox is becoming my main platform. And I found it really, really interesting. So I kind of made a note about it. And then Verge starts talking about it. And Forbes, you start talking about it. And uh, now Kotaku's talking about it. And the word just going around Twitter and trending and everywhere is Xbox is just hitting all the right notes. What do you think? Why is that happening? What is causing this shift? This is this is clearly a thing that is happening, a shift that is happening within the industry. What's causing it? Yeah, it's at least, at the very least, a perception shift. Like, I don't know if it's going to translate into some generational, uh, you know, bludgeoning of Xbox over Sony. Like, obviously, both consoles are selling extremely well, and Sony has a very strong lead heading into this generation. So, kind of everything sold out, so it's mostly about supply. But in terms of the actual switchover, um, I don't know everybody's reasons, but it's for me, it's a combination of big things and small things. Whereas small things are things I just continue to be kind of irked by with Sony uh, in terms of things I don't like about the UI or the controller or uh, the copying phase and update files and just Mm -hmm. kind of a a bunch of tiny things that add up to the point where like I don't really see a clear advantage uh, to continue to play at least third-party games that are shared across both platforms on Sony. But then there are all these larger kind of industry-based things where Xbox has this kind of juggernaut force uh, in the form of Game Pass where they are it's gotten to the point where like they're not just like adding all their own games to it and it's and now Bethesda games, but like they're doing some pretty wild stuff. Like they now have formerly Sony exclusive the show, the baseball game. <laughs> the, everybody and is the just like, game on day one. <laughs> everyone's stunned by that. It's like so seventy dollars on PS Five. Basically, it's just another game that you can play for your subscription fee every month. You know for. Xbox, like if you have Game Pass Ultimate, it's $14.99 a month. You get Game Pass Ultimate, you get Xbox Live, and you can play MLB The Show. I'm going to play MLB The Show, and I never would have touched that game without this Game Pass deal. It's it's really, really astounding. So how much, how much do you think Game Pass is influencing it? Because I think what Xbox has done is they've created a suite of services that are making their console more attractive not only for third-party games, but for their own games. And they've also invested heavily in Xbox Game Studios, right? So you start looking at all that together. People are looking at the future of Xbox, and they're like, oh, all the Bethesda games are definitely going to be on Xbox because they own that company. They have Game Studios, which is 20-something studios now. I don't know the exact number. Um, Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, so how much do you think that's impacting it? The service suite, the backwards compatibility, the the amount of games that they've teased this far? What do you think? It's kind of a meme at this point where it's like, oh, Xbox is gamers first. And like, you know, <laughs> that's like their big push. But like in practice, it does kind of feel like that. Whereas my perception of Sony is that they were just in such a huge lead. They just wanted to make a more powerful console and kind of change very little about it and very little about how they operate. Um, they did not debut some new big Game Pass competitor. They have similar services, but nothing at the level of Game Pass. They added some haptics to the controller, but like Xbox kind of looked at you know what what gamers actually want and specifically what they didn't want uh, after the Xbox One generation. And I mean, like I, you know, I'll, I've been called an Xbox fanboy for the past couple of weeks here ever since I wrote that article. But like <laughs> I spent five years lambasting uh, Microsoft over Xbox One because it was it failed on so many levels, especially closer to launch, where like it, it wasn't really even close. Like I would say the Series X and, and PS5 race is a lot closer because like Xbox One back in the day with the Kinect launch and like all in like the, being underpowered and all this stuff, 
it was like it was it was terrible for so long until almost really the Series X came out. And it seems like they have kind of taken those lessons to heart and come out with a console that has just a great set of offerings. And I, it's still to, like before I go too far down the rabbit hole, I think it's still early to, to talk about the they have all these studios in development and this and that and whatever. And like as we've seen with Google and Amazon, like it takes more than just a ton of money and talented people to make games. Like there's kind of almost an intangible factor of like. If, the, if something works or not. And Sony has spent a decade or more cultivating these in-house studios that have, you know, kind of leveled up over time to make these quality games. And outside of maybe Bethesda that's been there, like Microsoft kind of buying newer studios or assembling brand new studios, I, I hope it turns out. I just don't know if that's a guarantee yet. So that could still be a point in Sony's favor. Yeah, for sure. And I'm not talking about one platform winning versus another platform, right? Like that's that's console war stuff. But the thing that has me most excited is that Xbox is now competing with Sony because for so long, the narrative has been Sony has all the exclusives. Xbox has no games. You know, wh why do you own an Xbox? And now people are like, oh, you can just play everything on Game Pass. Like it's a really good, it's a good deal. And it's, it's just interesting for me to see the shift. And I think where Sony, the game Sony is playing, and I, I said this in one of my videos, the game Sony is playing is they're saying, well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have PlayStation Studios. We're going to make games like Last of Us. We have Ratchet & Clank. We have the Spider-Man games. They have heavy hitters over there. There's no denying that. But they're playing the same game they were playing in the PS4 era. Xbox sort of looked at the future of what they could offer, and they've basically created what a lot of people have referred to as the Netflix of gaming with Game Pass, right? And people are really, really liking it. So my next question is, I feel like Sony has sort of dropped the ball in terms of services. They haven't modernized their services in quite some time. And I'm wondering, do you think Sony will try and compete with the Xbox suite of services? I know they have PlayStation Now and they have some pretty good offerings with PlayStation Plus, but PlayStation Now just isn't hitting those same notes. What are your thoughts? No, I don't think they will. I don't think they need to. Like, it, for at least not yet. For, mm -hmm. for all this talk about how Xbox is doing this and that, right? Like, PS5 has broken every sales record that exists fundamentally. So they are now set up for a generation full of, of you know, even if they change relatively nothing, they have such a, a steep install base for PS5 where they're selling as many as they can make, essentially. And I understand that from the out, outside, Microsoft does have a better offering uh, in terms of Game Pass, but Sony is going to keep trying to push its luck and convince everyone that, I mean, I know we're still charging $70 for first party games, but like, it's God of War 2. What are you going to do? Not buy it? Like, yeah. Or, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn or whatever it's called, uh, Forbidden West or Uncharted 5. Or, you, you know, there's going to be six, seven, eight, nine games over the next couple of years that are going to be like must play game of the yeah, year contender. I, for Sony, I, I'm sure. I, I brought up footage of Horizon and like we have yeah. Returnal right around the corner that a lot of people are talking about. There's First Spoken, which is a timed exclusive God of War. They have that suite of games. So your answer is no, because they don't need to. But well, and the, 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 you think of how much money they'd be leaving on the table. I mean, I, I, I actually tried to look this up for a story, but like sales numbers are so freaking nebulous now that it's it's really hard to pinpoint them. But it's mm -hmm. it's tens and tens of millions of individual game sales yeah uh it's at 60 dollars a pop and now 70 dollars a pop and I, I think i think the 70 dollar thing is is bad and that's backfiring on them because it makes them look like they're just totally moving in the opposite direction and trying to squeeze as much money out of people as they can and like it really backfires for a game like godfall which was 70 dollars on ps5 where it's like okay come on like <laughs> <laughs> yeah give me a break here and then you have like mlb the show a Sony developed game that costs seventy dollars, and then yeah. is now on Game Pass. So, like, you run into situations like that where not everything is, you know, God of War two. So they look bad there when Xbox is making these kind of big, you know, forward moves in the the Netflix of gaming space. Where Sony is, I mean, they publicly said like they don't want to do that. They don't think it's sustainable. You can't budget AAA games on that. But like Microsoft has a trillion dollars, and they can do whatever they want. So. Mm -hmm. It's probably viable for Microsoft. I just don't think Sony would choose to leave that much money on the table, especially if they're in such a strong position with, with console sales already. 
what's it called? I, I think it's called like a loss leader where you take a loss initially and then you end up recouping that in the longer run. And I think that's what's going to happen. A lot of people are like, oh, they're going to raise the price. But Xbox did that earlier this year and they were like, whoops, our bad. And to your to your point about that was the, the dumbest thing they've done since launch. I'll say that. But yeah, it's yeah, corrected but it. they corrected it like the same day. Yeah, that was like it, it, it hadn't really happened yet. It was like was people hilarious. were it was like teased and then they, they corrected it. And the whole Sony MLB thing, that was MLB saying, no, Sony, we're going to put this on more platforms. Here, here's the quote. Uh, it wasn't our decision. That's according to Sony. As part of the goal for this year's game, MLB decided to bring the franchise to more players and baseball fans, a PlayStation representative tells Inverse. Uh, this decision provides a unique opportunity to further establish MLB The Show as a premier br brand for baseball video games. And MLB The Show is going to have a very good year. This whole idea of having sports games Games tied to one platform just, just to me it doesn't make any sense like that's... it was always kind of weird like this this is kind of a unique situation because mm -hmm. it's this third party entity like coming in from the outside whereas like that wouldn't really happen with almost any other franchise so it is it is a little strange but still a big deal nonetheless because it's For been sure. 15 years you know exclusive on playstation so you don't. Th so here. So I actually disagree with you on the services front. You're right that they don't have to, but I don't think they're just going to leave money on the table. They have PlayStation now. They're doing all these server shutdowns and reshufflings. I think they have something up their sleeve. I don't know what, but I do think we're going to see something comparable on PlayStation now. Uh, we saw sort of a weak entry with a recent Avengers edition. Everybody knows Avengers is kind of like. No, I, I don't want to say a flop, but there's less interest than a game like Outriders. Both are published by Square, right? Yeah. Yeah, so both are published by Square. And I have, co comedically, I think the internet likes to think that Sony calls up Square. They're like, you gave Xbox Outriders? We want Avengers. And then the internet's like, Avengers? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Sony it, probably but thought it, they were getting the better end of the deal there at first. But. Yeah, but... <laughs> I, I have to imagine there is some sort of conversation going on about how they can further enhance their PlayStation Now service. Um, do you want to comment on that before we move on? That's my two cents. I, I think that there are ways to enhance PlayStation Now and make it more Game Pass-like. It is just hard for me to see a situation where they do one of two things, where they put huge, huge games that they know are going to sell 10, 20, 25 million copies on PlayStation Game Pass day one because that's that's leaving money on the table uh, if they you know if they do that instead of just selling a box copy. Yeah. Uh, whereas Microsoft, a lot of Microsoft's originals are kind of unknowns at this point outside of your you know every so often Halo and Gears games. Um, but the PlayStation games are like known quantities; like they know those games will sell, and they are almost certain they will probably be good. Secondly, I don't know if they can pull what Microsoft has been pulling with these kind of crazy third party deals where you know, Beyond Light launches a Game Pass. Outriders launches on Game Pass. Like, mm -hmm. I bet I bet they almost got Cyberpunk to launch on Game Pass, which would have been kind of funny, but it, it seemed like they were close to that. Um, and y y there's going to be more of these third-party deals to come. And I just don't know if Sony has, like, either the war chest or the desire to kind of play that game against Microsoft. So, like, well, I think there's things they can do to improve their services and kind of improve PlayStation as a whole, I would be surprised if they went like fully down this rabbit hole and was like, you know, PlayStation Now Ultimate, fifteen dollars. Every PlayStation game is, or every new PlayStation game will be debut on here. I could see them doing more things like, oh, this is coming out on PC at the same time, and like, you know, some stuff like that. But I would be surprised if anytime soon they went down this path of of what Microsoft is doing, especially before we have any real proof of concept that like any of their mega hit upcoming games are not going to sell 20 million box copies or you yeah. know, whatever. So like if, if those sales start to decrease, if they're seeing the $70 thing backfire and they're losing in, and Microsoft has a bunch of huge hits and game pass goes to 50 million subscribers, maybe then they really start rethinking things. But I don't know if they're just in a position right now where they need to make drastic moves in that direction. Well, let me push you a little bit on that statement. Do you think it's the right move or do you think they should try and look at their services? I think they should because it seems like it's it's the inevitable future at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that will be, but it's like, 
you know, Netflix was first and now there are 11 <laughs> streaming services you need to subscribe for to get anything. And it's a little different in the game space because of how games are developed and like, but it, it's also a smaller field. So like you, you know, you know that Nintendo is not going to come up with their own game pass anytime soon. Yeah. So it's pretty much just Microsoft, Sony and, and PC. So it's, it might be like kind of old school versus new school. N- Nintendo kind of has something, though, where you can get access to various games via their subscription service. I, it's not Game Pass, but... Are you, just, just their online service? Is that what you mean? Something like that. I don't know enough about I don't, Nintendo. I, I know I'm not even going to pretend. Game. Okay, Internet, before I get this, you know, <laughs> giffied out or whatever. Justin, how dare I don't, you? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Nintendo. So um, I'm just saying Nintendo yeah. is not usually at the uh, cutting edge forefront of online game delivery, shall we say. Uh, So (laughs) I I don't see anything like that happening anytime soon. Okay, so moving on, and I was setting up the graphic for it. But (laughs) uh, (laughs) so what announcements do you think are going to be coming from Xbox in the coming months? Because there's a rumored event happening this month in the coming weeks. Uh, We know they have several developer focused events coming uh, in. There's one in May and there's apparently there's one in April. And the Xbox specific event is supposed to be to supplement that. And then we know an E3 is in June. So we have something in April, May, and June all focused around the Xbox console. So like, what do you think we're going to hear from those several events? And why are they doing this sort of monthly thing? That's a good question. I didn't know they were doing that many events until you just told me. But well, literally as of tonight, the new rumor is that uh, that they will maybe produce Kojima's next game in some sort of deal to try and appeal to Japanese gamers and everyone who's a Kojima fan. There was the Kojima statue behind Phil Spencer in the last Microsoft thing. Mm-hmm. And now I, I forget who's reporting. It's one of the journalist insider. Jeff types. Grubb. Um, Jeff Grubb. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, he, he says that that deal is potentially happening or whatever. Um, so that that's like the thing. And then of course, you know, they have unlimited money so they can just keep buying studios if they want. Uh, the Bethesda deal was huge. I don't know if they're going to immediately pivot into buying another huge studio, and yet they have been moving exceedingly fast. Like I even heard people talking about, like, "Hey, maybe they'll buy Square Enix," like, which would have sounded a bit ridiculous before they bought Bethesda, but yeah. <laughs> maybe not now, uh, considering Square Enix's catalog is maybe less than Bethesda. I don't know the it's size. Also, but- it's also really interesting that so many Final Fantasy games are on Game Pass, but they're not on. PlayStation now for me Square and PlayStation were synonymous with each other for so long and now I'm just seeing all of these games on the Xbox platform like maybe that dream that Xbox fans have had of Final Fantasy 14 finally coming to Xbox could finally come to fruition but that's been a pipe dream for so long anyway continue please. oh yeah 14 yeah. specifically that's that's yeah I, I would say that's almost a sure thing at some point it's just the bigger potatoes are like are they gonna buy Square as a whole like that mm-hmm. you know it, we we know we know that Microsoft wants to make inroads in Asia, and the idea is that they will make some sort of big Japanese purchase uh, to try and make that happen. And I don't, I, I, I you could run down the full list, but you, you know there are some usual suspects that are could you know could be the size that they want and have the catalog they want. So I don't know if that's like one of these monthly announcements they're going to make, and yet it's kind of. You know, Microsoft has done so many surprising things so quickly, it, it seems tough to rule anything out. For so sure. hold up, hold up. That That's a question for later, but I, I'll just throw okay. it to you right now. Are you saying that you think we're going to hear an acquisition announcement from Microsoft in the coming months about a Japanese developer or at least a collaboration? In one of those three shows? Yeah, I'll, I'll make that prediction. I, it could be just a collaboration. It could be a purchase. Like, I don't know. That's a lot of events. And when, with how quickly they've been moving... I wouldn't rule it out, certainly. Well, um, which which one would like, you bet on? Because who's out there? We got Sega. We got uh, uh, Platinum, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the people behind Bayonetta, it's Platinum, I believe. Um, yeah. And there's another one, like not 505, but somebody else in Japan who's... It has one of those names that just aren't click. Koei Tecmo. Koei Tecmo is mm. also out there. And there's some properties there. Do you think it's one of them or somebody else I'm forgetting about? I can't even remember like all the Japanese developers that there are. <laughs> um, I, I think those are all viable because of their relative size. Uh, but I also think it, it it could just be the Kojima announcement or something like that, where you know maybe maybe Kojima's next game is is the Game Pass game or something. So 
I, I think pretty much anything seems possible now after Beth- after the Bethesda deal. Like it just, you know, short of like Microsoft buying Activision or something like that, that maybe would be a bridge too yeah. far. But <laughs> Bobby Kotick uh, wouldn't let it happen. <laughs> I know, right? But like, like almost nothing seems off the table now in terms of like Microsoft's desire to be like the force in gaming through kind of sheer bulk alone. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like all those developers. And for me, it's just about seeing correlations. You see the statue on Phil Spencer's desk. OK, something's happening there because he's already put two teasers back there. Right. So he's saying. Like maybe it's maybe it's not as big as we're thinking. Maybe it's just something like Death Stranding's coming to the Xbox ecosystem. Because I don't know if that was exclusive. That'd be very for, boring, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it'd be cool for Xbox fans who didn't get to play it, and it w- and it would also be another one of those stories where like, oh, that was never supposed to come here, and now it is. There, it's Xbox tearing down those walls. You know, Sega with Yakuza, the Yakuza series. The whole mm-hmm. thing's available on Game Pass, which is just a tremendous value. And yeah, I, I I always talk about Game Pass because like it's a service that I've really connected with. And I going back to the original question, I think that's what's causing the shift because people are realizing they're subscribed to Game Pass. They're getting access to all these games and they're like, I just want to hang out in this ecosystem. I like it. And it's really cool to see all my friends playing out a game like Outriders, you know? So there's just these really interesting collaborations between Xbox and developers, and who knows what that means or where that goes. The the last question I want to ask you about all this Xbox stuff, just generally speaking, is why has Sony been so quiet? They haven't, I don't feel like they've had a ton of big announcements lately. They're just kind of like, yeah, we got Returnal coming. We got a new Ratchet and Clank. And Insomniac is doing phenomenal work over there, by the way. Insomniac has some of the most impressive technology out of any developer. And like, I guess the Senua team is looking really good with like Hellblade 2. But that's that's out in the future. What Insomniac is doing today, right now, is truly impressive. So the question I have is, why is Sony being so quiet? I guess because they can be. And I think... Ultimately, they believe the games, when they get here, will just speak for themselves. Uh, I think there's something to be said, to a certain extent, about kind of quiet confidence in your product in this day and age of like five years of cyberpunk hype and then (laughs) it it crashing and burning. So I think that's kind of a safe bet. And like, it's not like it's hurting PS5 sales for them to not be saying anything. So I feel like they can sort of just rest comfortably and like what what announcements are they going to make like it's all the it's you know it's kind of the stuff we're talking about now where it's like are they going to announce some big acquisition probably not are they going to put all their games on playstation now probably not so like what would they even be announcing past just kind of another horizon forbidden west trailer or like you know things like that like i don't i I think they've announced enough things that playstation fans are excited about and know to be excited about for the future that they're like all right we're gonna have like a really good game you got to play every like (laughs) three to six months (laughs) so you know let's just let's just keep doing that like it worked last generation and like yeah microsoft edges this out and some features and yeah game pass is is great but you know we're we're still humming along and even if the you know if the narrative has shift since ps4 versus xbox one at launch where ps4 was was so clearly dominant it's not really it has no material effect at this point Mm -hmm. um Again, that can change if Microsoft suddenly is producing tons of first-party hits with all these new studios and Bethesda, and they're just knocking out of the park. And yet, we just saw an entire generation where they had barely a handful of of, of games like that that were not named Forza. Like, you know, so we'll, there's still a lot to prove in that regard. And I think on the other side, while people have faith that Sony's games they're not talking about will be good, no one really knows what to expect uh, from Microsoft at this point and from Bethesda. You know, we we could not get Elder Scrolls six till like twenty twenty seven for all we know. So it, it's a little hard to, you know, get too too hyped about that, even if that is obviously probably going to be an Xbox exclusive in the future. Yeah, you know, to sort of just talk about my opinion about the whole thing. Um, I think you're right. They don't have to say anything. They have plenty of console sales. They're happy with that. They can't even keep up with production. There's still a huge demand for PlayStation 5s and Xbox Series X, and there's a chip shortage. So both companies, in terms of hardware sales, are at a bit of a stalemate, right? Um, 
They're both sold out. That's good news for everybody. My whole thing and the whole the, uh, the whole questioning <laughs> of all this stuff is I want Sony to compete with Microsoft. I want Microsoft to keep pushing innovation because they they were backed into a corner where they were basically ready to cancel the Xbox brand, period, at the start of the Xbox One. And you look at where it is today, and the future is looking incredibly bright and optimistic for the Xbox brand. And I want them both to have just excellent services, excellent games, so that everybody ends up winning in the end. When that when that's the scenario, people like we win as gamers and developers win because they have more opportunities to develop for one or the other. And you kind of got a curry favor with then Xbox and PlayStation have to curry favor with developers to have, you know, their suite of exclusives. And if we get back to that perfectly balanced sort of situation, you know, as opposed to having too much on one side, to me, that's a better environment for everybody. Would you agree with that or no? Yeah, well, it, and that's kind of where we are, like, because there, there isn't that huge, huge disparity there was before. So, like, Microsoft is sort of caught up in, in that sense, whereas, like, and then Sony hasn't done anything to surge further ahead necessarily. So, we are kind of in a situation where it, it does feel more balanced. And I, I'm sure Sony is going to work to improve both their services and you know, the system itself. And I'm hoping for like a UI redesign, things like that. Like it, it might not be earth shattering things, but I think they are feeling the push from Microsoft a little bit more so than they were with the Xbox one when everyone was just outright laughing at, you know, connect bundling with it. Like, yeah, that's not the situation anymore. And Xbox is something they have to take seriously. And it may, it might not be just straight up copying everything Xbox is doing, especially if they're still in the lead and are likely to maintain that lead. But it does probably mean more innovation because, you know, a, a generation of essentially just dominating the Xbox led them to change relatively little other than making, you know, a, a more powerful PlayStation. And that that's a bit of complacency because they're like, okay, well, it worked before. Let's just do the same thing again and not really go nuts with all these features. And I, I know I'm glossing over some things they added, like cards and, and whatever, but Generally speaking, I don't I don't think they did as much in that arena as like comparing, you know, the Series X to the Xbox One and like the the wide, wide gap between those two. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so as briefly as possible, I'll, I'll pose you the question one more time. We answered it at the top, but just to sort of recap. Why do you think people are flocking to Xbox? Why are we seeing these stories on Kotaku, on Forbes, on IGN? Well, from IGN employees like my buddy Brian Altano uh, saying Hey, I get it. Xbox is is doing some smart stuff uh, for clicks. Clearly, I mean that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think a lot of it is Game Pass, uh, and then a lot of it are these just massive deals they're making, uh, showing how much Microsoft is investing in its first party lineup, its deals with third party developers, and just nothing has has gone wrong like it did with the Xbox One. And both consoles have not really released any kind of like ultra mega hit jaw dropping exclusives at this point. So there's no real way to compare those yet. So it's all the positive stories have pretty much been like, can you believe this new thing Microsoft is getting on Game Pass? Or mm -hmm. can you believe this multi-billion dollar studio Microsoft just bought where Sony doesn't really have any news like that. And Sony's just, eh, we're still making games and yeah. sorry, you can't get a PS5 yet. So <laughs> I, I, I think Xbox is, is winning this from a PR perspective, from a features perspective. But whether that translates into a, quote, generational win, probably not. It's just I think it's going to be a lot more kind of an even contest than, than last time. And again, like you said, everybody kind of wins. Yeah. If Xbox gets better, that pleases Xbox fans. Someone like me who owns both systems, I will probably be playing Xbox third party games more because I like their ecosystem more. I like mm -hmm. all their little features and some things about Sony annoy me. I will still play my PlayStation. You're going to play God of War Ragnarok. You're going to play I, Horizon. I'm going to play all the exclusive yeah. and I'm going to keep playing Destiny there because it doesn't mm -hmm. have crossplay yet and all my friends are on it and it's uh, easier to, you know, group up with them. So, although the party system, that's something else Sony has to fix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I, I, there's no, there's no like clear losers here. Like, I, I wouldn't say Sony is losing by selling, you know, millions and millions of PS5s. It's just, they seem relatively quiet compared to Xbox and Xbox is making these just colossal kind of industry shattering moves that 
Sony almost can't be expected to make at that level, I guess. They can't. I, I don't think uh, Sony as a company has the capital. And that's not a dig at PlayStation. That's just if you look at the, the revenue of Microsoft, because they have they sell Windows, right? <laughs> you look yeah. at that versus, you know, Sony, who is largely movies and entertainment. It's it's still TV. massive. Yeah. And TV, it's massive. It's it's just not comparable. My dishwasher. Yeah, going there, are, there are different <laughs> levels of uh, apocalyptic size corporations in America. And <laughs> Microsoft is like top, you know, whatever in the world. And Sony's a little further down the list. But yeah, so I think yeah. you're right. And you sort of hit the nail on the head. It's Microsoft is making industry shattering, interesting moves that has everybody talking. But in addition to that, they have this awesome backwards compatibility suite, and they also are doing something very, very interesting and forward thinking with Game Pass. And that is why people are starting to get into the Xbox ecosystem, which, which is really well optimized and slick, and it's easier to navigate more than ever now. And Sony is stumbling there. So that's why the conversation is shifting. And I think it's as simple as that. We'll see how it pans out over the next, what, 10 years or however long these consoles are going to be. <laughs> we'll around. check back in 10 years uh, yeah. when the show's still going and uh, see how that. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the show still going, it's still going, but it's fatality time. Let's go. Finish him. Fatality. Outstanding. <laughs> Flawless victory. If you want to subscribe to Paul, you can do so by clicking his icon or checking the description below. Thank you for watching this show. This show airs every Sunday, and I post a video every day at 7 a.m. The baby keeps me up all night. So if you like this channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and you'll know what's coming next. See you for the next one. Bye, everybody.